Support comes from the house. The nation's first collegiate Under Armour store is at OU. Oh, yeah. On Court Street or online at OUisInTheHouse.com. And by Glenwood Retirement Community, offering today's active and independent seniors lifestyle options that meet their needs. Independent living, assisted living, and independent cottage homes. Information at www.glenwoodretirement.org or 800-464-0161. This week on the Bobcat Sports Showcase, we'll take a look back at Ohio football's win over Akron and take you on a trip to Michigan with the soccer team. This is the Bobcat Sports Showcase. Hello Bobcat fans and welcome to the Bobcat Sports Showcase. I'm Brad Appleton, coming to you from College Green at Ohio University. The Ohio football team is ranked for the first time since 1968 after their 34-28 win over Akron, taking the number 25 spot. It was homecoming week at Ohio and the Cats played in front of more than 25,000 at Peden Stadium. For more on how the Cats were able to hold on to the W, here's this week's Bobcat Rewind. This is homecoming perfection, friends. We bring you edition seven of 2012 of Bobcat football. It's game on between the Akron Zips and the Ohio Bobcats. Ball at the Akron 39, first and 10. Tettleton will take the snap, toss it left. Bo will come around and hand it off. It's a throwback pass. Landon Smith to the right side. Caught by Tettleton. 10-5-6 for the Cats. A throwback pass. Tettleton wide open from here to Norman. Caught the ball into the south end zone. Six for the green and white. Ball at the Akron 13. Ohio trying to go up. Tettleton waits for the snap. Takes the snap. And he stands in. Looks left. Throws it left. There's Foster. Yes, sir. Touchdown, Cats. Dante Foster on that fade to the far boundary. Oh, that ball was thrown perfectly. And that is the record. 39 touchdown passes thrown in the career for Tyler Tettleton. He is now number one all time in that category in Ohio University history. Back to passes, Williams has time, zips it left side. There's Williams, caught it at the three, made a move into the end zone. Touchdown, Akron. 11.56 to go, quarter three, Ohio 20, Akron 13. Play action, Tyler rolls right, back right corner of the end zone. It's caught. Troy Hill caught the ball right by the far pylon. Yes, sir. What a brilliant pass from Tyler, and what a great catch. Pitch over to the right side. Boykin got to the right side numbers. Leans forward. Trucks for the end zone, and he is not in yet. They don't give the signal. Uh, Cannon says yes. Yeah, the Cannon said yes, and no official gave the word, and so this is the worst touchdown call in the history <laughs> of radio. But Ohio gets in on Ryan Boykin's run. 33 to 14, show me a sign, put up your hands. Your homecoming 2012 is a happy one. And the Cats get it done, 34 to 28 over the Akron Zips. I think it was a game that had its ups and downs for probably both uh, both teams. Um, we got an, uh, an early start, which is something we have really not done um, all year long, so that was obviously very pleasing to all of us. Uh, a great feeling for the Bobcats as they remain undefeated at 7-0, and as I mentioned earlier, they are now nationally ranked at 25. However, this week the team has a bye week and won't officially get to play as a ranked team, but that doesn't make the moment any less sweet. Pat Case has spoke with a couple players, Coach Frank Solich, and even President Obama had a little bit to say about the team's recent success. I came here today because I heard you've got a pretty fun football team to watch. Undefeated, if I'm not mistaken. A shot at the MAC championship. Maybe a BCS bid. But uh, it is outstanding. The Bobcats are doing so well, so I want to wish you guys luck in the upcoming season. No, you're not hallucinating. The President of the United States of America opened his speech in Athens, Ohio by recognizing the undefeated record of the Ohio University football team. Uh, that was pretty awesome. You know, it's, it's crazy that he actually came here to our university and the fact that he gave us a shout out was pretty special. 
um, you know, I, I was watching the whole thing just to, just to see if he would say anything. And, um, you know, I, I just thought it was the coolest thing. I'm um, you know, so proud to, to be a part of this team, to be, uh, you know, be a part of what we're doing here. So that's really cool to, to have the president give us a shout out. All politics aside, the Bobcats have certainly earned the national attention they are receiving. For the first time in 44 years, the Cats find themselves in the AP Top 25. The last time Ohio was nationally ranked, the Vietnam War was in full swing and man had yet to set foot on the moon. It's definitely something coming into Ohio we wanted to strive for to make our program uh, better than it was and give it a winning tradition and we feel like we're getting to that. Even head coach Frank Solich, a man who once led Big 12 Power Nebraska to a BCS National Championship game, admits that this publicity is good publicity. You know, I, I think it's, it's great for the program. Um, it gives us national recognition, which is always good for you. Um, it's good for recruiting. Um, I, I think it's good for the attitude of uh, the players in, in our program right now. It's good for the attitude of our coaches. I, I think it's um, great for the fans. Of course, with success comes a price. Ohio's rise to the ranks of college football's elite means the target on the Cats' back has grown even larger. But the players on this team are more than ready to rise up to the challenge. Yeah, we prepare for that every time we come out in the field and practice. You know, we know a lot of people, they want to beat us. And, you know, that's the goal of the game is, is to get a win. So it's something that we prepare for and we don't take uh, anything for granted. So we got to keep working hard and keep pushing. So while President Obama is pushing for four more years in the White House, the football team he recognized on October 17th is simply pushing to win four quarters of football, one week at a time. Came real late, you know, both of us like got the real late offer, you know, and stuff. And uh, we kind of talked to it back and forth and we're like, we went up on the visit together actually. This fall, PBS strikes gold. Britain's number one hit comes to America. Ken Burns shows us a new way of looking at the past. The air itself could kill you. And Frontline delivers balance and depth with its look at the candidates. This election is a make or break moment. There's only one place that can take you any place. Isn't it wonderful? PBS. We are born explorers. We explore places, people, and ideas. We try. We succeed. And we learn. We are born explorers. What journeys wait for you? There is one stage that is the Met and Carnegie Hall. It is the Kennedy Center and a club in Austin. It is closer than any seat in the house, no matter where you call home. PBS, the great American stage that fits in every living room. Your support of PBS brings the arts home. for the Bobcat Sports Showcase comes from the Follett's University Bookstore. Proudly supporting the Bobcats from 63 South Court Street in Athens, Ohio. Online at efollett.com for Bobcat apparel and merchandise. Welcome back to the Bobcat Sports Showcase. I'm Brad Appleton. The recent success of the Ohio football team has not only brought them national attention, but new players as well. Two of those new additions came this past spring in the form of Matt Waters and defensive end Ty Brands. Both attended Iowa Western Community College and have already made an impact this season. Mark Pierce brings you more on their story. It takes a complete team effort to go through a football season undefeated. The Cats haven't accomplished that goal yet, but they are surely on their way. Ohio's team consists of every type of player from all corners of the country. Some have come to Athens the traditional way, being recruited out of high school. Some players are current or former walk-ons. The Cats also have several transfers. 
Two of them came from the same community college. Matt Waters and Ty Brands both transferred from Iowa Western Community College after the 2011 season. At Iowa Western, the teammates were two of the best players on the team. Coming to Ohio, they just wanted to make a name for themselves and contribute to the green and white. Yeah, I, I came in here and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be, you know, one of the better players and, you know, come in here and, you know, not be just another guy. You know, I wanted to be somebody who could come in and do something and make a difference here. Um, you know, we, so. And it's always nice to have friends. It's always a little intimidating going to a new school and joining a new team. But having a friend as support makes the process a little bit easier. We kind of talked to it back and forth, and we're like, we went up on the visit together, actually, and stuff. And we're like, you know, this would be a great place to go, you know, and we are both excited that, you know, we could have somebody we came from. The diversity on the Bobcats roster speaks volume for the type of program Frank Solich and his staff have built. Brands and Waters both prove that hardworking players can compete no matter how they found their way onto the team. I mean, that means a lot for the program, you know, like there's, you know, a lot of people, you know, wanting to come here, not just, you know, coming here because that's, you know, somebody that gave an offer. It's people want to come here, but want to be a part of Ohio, want to, you know, start something up and, you know, keep doing bigger and better things. Great stuff there. Thanks, Mark. During the offseason, volleyball players are given a chance to get a little extra playing time in through the club circuit. Helps to brush up on skills while enjoying some friendly competition as well. Kaylee Donegan spotlights three Ohio volleyball players who are familiar with the club circuit and the process behind it. Collegiate volleyball players are no strangers to playing club volleyball. In fact, everyone on the Bobcats squad played club before arriving in Athens. But three Bobcats share a special club connection. Abby Gilliland, Hannah Burke-Lee, and Kelly Lamberti all played for Sky High in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and the three agree that playing club has numerous benefits. Um, I just think because it's such like a longer season that helps you improve your skills a lot more and you have a lot more time to develop. The club is a much, obviously it's a much longer season, so it gives you time to really develop your game more so than a high school. Um, I think club is kind of a big thing because high school season only goes for so long and club you kind of start right after high school season and go through the majority of the year and then high school season starts back up again so you get to play volleyball for the whole year. The benefits of club reaches way beyond the court. My club teams are like my best friends and having Hannah here who's like literally like my best friend from home is it's like awesome just to like have them in my life. It's a lot like this I mean you're with the same team the whole year um, you you make new friends with people different age groups. So I guess club, it's kind of different because you're always with the same age group, but it's nice to have friends that are older and younger. While the three girls played for the same club, Abby was in a younger age group than the other two. And it seemed as though a little rivalry existed between the teams. Club was also a big rival between our age groups, between my, Kelly's and my team and Abby's team. We were always kind of playing against each other. And club, I mean, there was always a rivalry between our age groups, both of us won national championships and we were motivated by the other group to try and do better. Yet, rivalries aside, the girls mesh perfectly, both as teammates and as friends. It's great to be able to play with Abby now because I guess, I mean, we got along, but like our teams didn't. It was just a huge rivalry, so it's, it's really exciting to be able to play with her. Coming here, I mean, it's ironic that we're all here, but it's working. We're doing really well at closing the block and just pushing over the net instead of trying to get high. Hi, I'm Ken Burns. My films explore uniquely American stories about the extraordinary people and times that make up our history. I can't imagine telling my stories anywhere but on PBS, the one place that invites all Americans from every walk of life to discover new places, new ideas, and the bigger world around us. And I'm grateful for the role you play. Supporting your local station ensures that together we can continue to share these stories. Thank you. This is what we were. This is where we've been. This is who we are. The hope still lives and the dream shall never die. This is our experience, the American experience.
When I was looking for an acting program, I wanted to find a university with a strong community of engaged students and professors, where I get to both study acting and be an actor. I'd say hello, but it's a little late for introductions. My name is Dinah Berkeley, and my path to Hollywood begins right here at Ohio University. Hi. Find the path to your promise. After my first high school marketing class, I knew I wanted a career in business. And I found a university with one of the best programs in the nation. I had the chance to work on real world projects and compete in the National Collegiate Sales Competition. Thanks to my classwork, practical experience, and the encouragement of my professors, I won first place. It was awesome. My name is Jasmine Merritt, and I chose the right university. My home away from home. Find the path to your promise. Support comes from the house. The nation's first collegiate Under Armour store is at OU. Oh yeah, on Court Street or online at OUisInTheHouse.com. Welcome back to the Bobcat Sports Showcase. I'm Brad Appleton. For Ohio athletics coverage while on the go, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Bobcat Showcase and check us out on the web at wob.org slash showcase. While you may be familiar with the terms bump, set, spike, and block, there are many other plays that happen during a volleyball game, all of which need to be recorded. Carter Rodriguez takes a look at the stat sheet and figures out just where the Bobcats excel. Ohio Volleyball has found themselves a groove in MAC play. They've won seven straight matches, and a major portion of that can be attributed to the defense, especially the blocking. The green and white are leading the MAC in opponent hitting percentage, and a big part of that is the catch proficiency on the front line. They're also leading the league in blocks, and for the Bobcats, it's a simple case of practice makes perfect. We've just worked a lot on breaking the process of blocking down. Um, so we start with footwork and then um, just our hands, and then we put it all together um, and practice live blocking. They're just working hard. Um, we've been stressing a lot of it in practice, uh, especially lately, but kind of over the course of the year. And They've just kind of taken and ran with it and basically just hard work, I think. It's not as simple as jumping and praying for dear life that you don't get blasted in the face either. There's a lot of communication that's got to happen if Ohio wants to be successful. Chemistry does play into it because you have to be in sync perfectly in order for the block to work as well as it can. You have to talk a lot in the front row. You have to talk about where your individual hitter is going to go. They're communicating a lot of, A, where their hitters are going. Um, so you obviously have to know where the hitters are in order to get in front of them. And then secondly, they're, they're, they're talking a lot about how they want to time their block. Despite all the work that goes into the art of blocking, Coach Walhall says that he just wants the Cats to use their instincts once they're on the court. Mostly just being disciplined. It, it's less thinking getting blocks, more just taking up space, being solid, and, and, and just really being disciplined in your movement. For the Cats, the right mindset is everything. Instead of digging the ball, our job is blocking. So I think you just need to have the attitude of going up and you're going to shut down that hitter every time. I just try and be like really calm and just like assess where she's going to set the ball and just try and get there as fast as possible. The Cats do work on the blocks and they know it. And there's nothing they relish like going up against a quality hitter. When you get a huge block, it's the best feeling. It's my favorite part of volleyball, so it's awesome. Very interesting stuff there. Thanks, Carter. The Ohio field hockey team stands at 8-6 on the year with a big 5-1 win over conference foe Missouri State to wrap up home games for the season. However, the girls will travel for their last two regular season games before heading to Oxford for the MAC tournament. Sarah Neely shows how the girls will need to become road warriors if they are to find success for the end of the season. As the Bobcats look to the end of their regular season, they face some unfinished business on the road. Not only will these final games against Central Michigan and Miami preceding the MAC tournament be out of town, but so will the tournament itself. Last year, the Bobcats hosted the MAC tournament and took the championship on their home field. This year, the MAC tournament will be hosted at Miami University, where the Cats will face the Red Hawks the weekend before in their final match of the regular season. Should they advance into postseason play, the Cats will have played at Miami for back-to-back -back weeks. I don't think it affects us too much. The field is beautiful. It's, it's fairly new. It plays really fast. So it plays to our style, which we like. And, and we're comfortable there. We've, we've played on that field many times and, and, and just very happy with, with going there. But first, they have to get into the tournament. And in order to do that, they need to focus on the game ahead, Central Michigan. 
you know, if we can win that, hopefully they'll decide that we're in the tournament. That's that's our objective with that. And then after that, um, the Miami game, we'll, we'll see where we stand and what's happening with that. But we can't worry about them right now. We just got to worry about the Central game. Beating Central Michigan will be no easy task. Central joins Ohio as two of four teams that have a 2-1 and one record in the MAC. We're going up there to have a battle. They, they've competed against some very good teams. They're going to be competitive and they're fast on their own field as well. There's just one thing the Cats have to do to win. Score. Score soon <laughs> and as, as fast as possible. We, we have to move the ball and we have to move it quickly because uh, they're good defensively. Um, but I think if we move around them and can execute quickly around them, then we should have a lot of space and, and then we can use our speed. We really want this. Um, and we're going to come out hard both games with a really good attitude and we're going to win. <laughs> we're going to win by a lot and we're not going to go into overtime. I think we're just sick of it. I just go there every day before practice and I'll feed my back and they'll help me like stretch out some important muscles. Now you told me there was an interesting story. Where did you find this? My mother had a cousin. Grandpa. Husband's parents. Great uncle. Mom's third cousin. Governor of Vermont. That I'd found laying on a trash pile. Flea market dealer. In the dirt. She paid $45. $25. Never seen one quite like this. Rare, fabulous. Fantastic. $25,000. $250,000. $300,000. Oh my God. Every treasure tells a story. Antiques Roadshow. Mondays only on PBS. One tremendous thing about PBS is that it makes art accessible by putting it on a platform where millions of people can access it for free. And we need it. We need music, we need dance, we need great theater for our soul, for joy in our lives. A lot of people flip on PBS and hear or see something that wakes up that integral part of being a human being, which is enjoying the arts of other human beings. So I'm grateful for PBS as an artist and as a viewer. I am a chef, I cook for a living. And I think of PBS as a window to the world, that kind of place where you feel you are part of the story. I want to be part of every possible world that's out there. That's when things become really amazing. And when you are able to see stories that make you wonder, wow, makes you think, that's what really makes PBS so meaningful. And that's the kind of TV we need to be supporting today. Welcome back to the Bobcat Sports Showcase. I'm Brad Appleton. When a student athlete becomes injured, the athletic trainers are the first to respond. They work to treat, diagnose, and even comfort the athletes and become a deciding factor in how quickly that athlete can return to action. Sarah Vallone examines just how important the role of an athletic trainer can be. Athletic trainers tend to all types of athletes from football players to swimmers and with each athlete comes unique injuries. It kind of depends on each person. There's a lot of shoulder problems and knee problems and lower back. Nicole Baker, an athletic trainer here at Ohio University, has worked with both male and female athletes. Not only is attending to male and female athletes different in a medical sense, but also in how she interacts with the athletes on game day. With males, um, as soon as you walk into a facility, you know that it's game day. With females, I mean, soccer players are some of the toughest athletes I've ever worked with. And it's Baker's job to keep hard playing soccer players like Ohio goalie Rachel Freyan going the entire season. We go get treatment from our trainers, help with things, ice baths, heating, stim, electrical stimulation. Um, that's goalkeeping, you know, you're diving, hitting the ground constantly, so you really have to take care of your body and make sure you're in top shape. There's bruising, it's always going to happen, but just get the treatment for it. Athletic trainers don't just see their athletes on game day, but almost every day of the entire season, and the treatment is different each day. During the week, you can be a little bit more aggressive with things, especially I really like doing manual therapy, working with my hands and doing soft tissue work. And that's the kind of thing um, where you, it's okay if you work out trigger points on someone and they're sore. Who cares if they're a little bit sore for practice? They're here for our meets and everything and they'll help us and they'll make sure we get ice afterwards. So, I mean, it's definitely really important to be like loosened up and stuff beforehand because if something's hurting, then it, it gets bad during practice and meets. 
and for some of the athletes being treated so often, it becomes routine. It comes down to treatments on game days. There's certain things that the guys want um, that we know it doesn't really do anything. They even know it, but they just want it. It's better to go daily and like be proactive with your injuries than to wait until you're injured. So I just try to get in there every day and make sure I'm doing what they're telling me to do so that way I can practice on a daily basis. Injuries and treatments come in many forms, but it's only athletic trainers who keep the athletes ready to storm the field. A very important job. Thanks, Sarah. The Ohio soccer team traveled north to Michigan this week to take on Eastern and Western Michigan. While the Cats lost 2-1 against Eastern, they were up against Western Michigan before the game was called due to weather just three minutes before it counted. Tyler Rossin traveled with the team and brings you all the highlights from the Cats trip. It's a vital part of Division I athletics, the road trip. This past weekend, I took to the road with Ohio women's soccer to see what one of these trips was really like. So what's there to do on a five-hour road trip? Well, you can drive, read, or most likely make a replica of your opponent's logo out of food items. So with the contest underway, a quick stop at Kroger was in order, and figuring out a strategy became the name of the game. The strategy is not to waste our time talking about strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the bus, things were getting heated, and stopping for dinner meant the competition had come to a close. I like this team just because they're, 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 the they're close, yeah, the yeah. proximity. Following a short presentation from each group, the judges had made their decisions. While the replicas didn't make it back on the bus, the players were hoping these two small victories were a sign of things to come. A quick turnaround from Thursday night to Friday morning saw the Bobcats gearing up for Game 1 against Eastern Michigan University. Let all the frustrations and everything else go away, whatever it might be, and just play soccer. You know, it's frustrating when they're able to execute, you know, in the final 20 minutes what they should have done from the first minute on. With a loss in the books, it was once again back to the bus. Next stop, Kalamazoo. A late Friday night was met by an off day on Saturday, but that didn't slow these cats down one bit. A video session followed by training left Ohio crisp and ready for Sunday's game against Western Michigan University. But the student in student athlete is often overlooked, and between the games, practices, and bus rides, there is some downtime. So, a little studying was most certainly in order, and the players made some time for a movie or two, and making fun of the cameraman. With the final day of the road trip upon them, Ohio was locked in and ready to secure their first win of the trip. So Ohio soccer played 68 minutes, and then the game got postponed. Right now, it's about 3.20. We only have until 4 o'clock. Uh, the refs deem the field unplayable right now. I'm not really sure why. These Bobcats worked as hard as they could to get the field in playing condition and even inspired this reporter to help out just a bit. However, their efforts would be in vain as time would run out. But I quickly learned that even though there wouldn't be a finish to the game, there was still some fun to be had. Finally, it was back to the bus and back to work on the long road trip to Athens. When all was said and done, Ohio had spent four days on the road. And yet, while it was a whirlwind for someone on the outside, it was just another weekend in the life of a student athlete. Win or lose, looks like the girls still had a fun trip. Thanks, Tyler. And with that comes the end of another episode of the Bobcat Sports Showcase. Don't forget for on the go Ohio athletics coverage to follow us on Twitter at Bobcat Showcase and check us out on the web at wub.org slash showcase. For me and the rest of the crew, I'm Brad Appleton saying thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Support comes from the house. The nation's first collegiate Under Armour store is at OU. Oh yeah, on Court Street or online at ousinthehouse.com. And by Glenwood Retirement Community, offering today's active and independent seniors lifestyle options that meet their needs. Independent living, assisted living, and independent cottage homes. Information at www.glenwoodretirement.org or 800-464-0161. And by Follett's University Bookstore, proudly supporting the Bobcats from 63 South Court Street in Athens, Ohio. Online at efollett.com for Bobcat apparel and merchandise.